Hi everyone. Good evening. So let us go ahead with our Avunon class. What we are following, we are following with the author's introduction to Avunon of medicine. <clears throat> so far, what we have studied. Let me just give a quick recap to all of you. so that uh, uh, it is going to be a very good understanding about the introduction especially the 11th paragraph of it we were doing 11th paragraph of it so i am going to give a quick recap of it i gave you yesterday the whole recap of uh, the 10 of uh, paragraphs of the introduction <clears throat> so uh, regarding the 11th paragraph what is it containing you know uh, in this uh, paragraphs henmin was talking about the ways of treatment going on in his time or even before his time so uh, he gave an overview you know uh, various kind of treatments he took first one that is the evacuation method in this evacuation method uh, he gave the explanation about how do they decide there is a metallistic cause and how to really evacuate them so uh, what are the examples of the evacuation so uh, yesterday i told you in a very brief that uh, how some number of uh, examples given in which you know uh, henmin has given a comparison between the ways of treatment of the old school and ways of treatment of uh, homeopathy henmin's concept if you clearly read the whole uh, this longest 35 lines uh, paragraph you can be very simply say that these causal treatment examples hanmin you know has written you know in three different types the first one is the common removal ways second is surgical ways and third is external application methods external application treatment so in the first one the common removal ways which we discussed at length yesterday they are total four not five i told you yesterday five so it is exactly four and what are those the first i discussed with you the bile removal in bilious fever then second i discussed with you the emetics for git disturbances and we discussed for both the homeopathic comparison also and the third one is removal of worms and mucus and other certain things and the fourth one was bloodletting used for hemorrhage diseases hemorrhagic diseases and inflammatory diseases so these are the four most common ways but in vogue you know even before hanimin's time then in the following lines of this para henmin has given uh, you know the uh, six type of surgical ways of treatment those who were in vogue those who were going on even before henmin's time till his time what is what are those tie of polyp cut heat the different kind of swellings you know some if suppose there is some abscess you give heat them and then cut them or if there is a ripe abscess uh, simply you know you drain them the third one is enucleation what is happening pinkel is saying sir in inflammatory fevers they have advised uh -huh. see uh, you are right uh, twinkle uh, in the common removal ways hanmin has given what should be done with homeopathy 
so he said in inflammatory conditions instead of even uh, putting out even a drop of blood you give aconite and when he is saying decillion fold dilution that means it is going to be 30c 30 potency so you can calculate the decillion <clears throat> go and see the meaning of decillion it will be solving just count all the zeros so six surgical ways i told you tie off polyp cut and drain uh, the abscess enucleate what is that enucleate in any kind of uh, swelling tumor or something you simply take out the nucleus portion that is called enucleation so that rest of the uh, portion will be uh, you know uh, getting uh, shrink itself the fourth way is option of aneurysm fistula and all such conditions then in fifth cut and remove the breast tumor and such conditions and sixth one is if there is a gangrene of the limb you amputate that in this surgical ways hanmin has not given any footnote to give a comparison of homeopathic treatment but then in the common removal ways all those four methods hanmin gave in the footnote the proper comparison ways of homeopathic treatment because in surgical ways you cannot come up with the exact medicine it will be according to the case so that is the reason hanmin has not given any kind of comparison then comes the third one that is the external mode of treatment external uh, methods of treatment that is external applications advised what are those apply some repel repellent you know some kind of medicines which will repel whatever is there on the skin or it can be you know there are seven ways of uh, using some external means on the skin or the body repellents to drying up if there is some ulcer or some discharge some weeping eczemas for that you dry up how you apply some ointments which is containing zinc copper lead all such conditions all such substances then third one is Uh, you got tries if you find you know any kind of uh, wart or any kind of uh, growth on the small growth on the skin uh, you got tries them and then fourth one is that uh, what all you can do is just i tell you you can you can destroy fig warts there are various ways of destroying the fig warts then fifth one is drive away the itch like applying sulfur and all sulfur lead mercury zinc these are the substances used externally on the skin for removing the <coughs> itching then the sixth one is that uh, if there is some kind of uh, uh, infection in the eye some inflammation in the eye then apply uh, some kind of eye drops which contain zinc or such substance to uh, remove the uh, inflammation of the eyes then uh, if suppose application on the skin for pains if you have pain in the joints pain in the limbs and what are you doing you are applying you know certain kind of ointments those who are containing some pain killing medicines so these are the total 17 examples of three different varieties first one is the four example of common methods six of surgical ways and seven of external ways of treatment out of this you count so many of them are still in use aaj bhi istemal hote hain they are still in use you can find them <clears throat> and the first common ways there are footnotes given for giving the example with homeopathy but rest of the two ways no footnotes hence no any kind of comparison given with homeopathy because then it is case to case it cannot be something a common way like aconite like uh, 
pulsed la like sulfuric acid like coffee like this it cannot be in such uh, surgical and external uh, issues on the skin so these were the <clears throat> total ways we could find out in the paragraph 11 of it so uh, out of this if you find those who are still in use you can find out the uh, length of the thought persisting before hanimin and after hanimin till now those who are not in work those are not in use like let letting is not in use so that is the impact of the writings of hanimin the uh, admonitions of uh, master hanimin to the profession that finally they agreed to that yes we should not do all this and uh, we need to learn are we as a homeopathic doctor doing all this like for example so many of external treatment ways you will find many many homeopathic doctors they are using it what are they doing they are giving some kind of ointments you know for the warts for the acne for any other skin conditions and they forget what hanmin wanted to say rather they used one uh, saying of one writing of hanmin uh, i discussed with you yesterday about aphorism 282 footnote of 6th edition of the agni in that footnote of the 282 6th edition hanmin advised in such cases where there are warts and after the indicated medicine given and sufficient weight and repetition everything the internal disease is completely became all right but then what still you know remains only in such condition hanmin advised to use the indicated medicine externally also only one condition he, he said so instead of seeing that internal disease is already there you start with the external application because hanimin said once somewhere so my humble submission to the profession is that we should not distort the writings of hanimin rather we should be able to understand in the right spirit and my understanding is whenever we are not thorough with the agno like we are studying now it is it is giving us a feel regarding the kind of treatment since ages and still continuing <clears throat> in such conditions when we are not thorough with the uh, understanding then uh, we do commit mistakes we do mistakes misunderstanding hanimin or we do a cunning job we do a smart job that assuming that we are rather more uh, you can say uh, smarter more uh, understanding than hanimin we are more hanimin than hanimin so that is what you know the difficulties occur yes he advised the same potency but there is a condition when you can use it it is only when you are finding the whole internal melody is cured but this externally this is only existing so that we need to understand so this is all about you know uh, in detail about the para 11 now let us quickly catch up you know with the uh, next paragraphs and uh, we try to uh, complete you know today uh, some 20 paragraphs 99 paragraphs if we just go and uh, analyze each and every paragraph in this much of uh, detail then it will be really difficult but then these uh, paragraphs up to 20 i believe we can uh, really complete now because uh, these paragraphs are Uh, small paragraphs easy paragraphs very list of footnotes 
So very easy to understand all of them. So now, what is he saying in the twelfth of the paragraph? Just to see twelfth paragraph. If you have read, but then if even not read, never mind. I am just going to first give you an overview of all these things. You know, up to the fifteenth paragraph, Hanman is still you know going to talk about this evacuation methods in this. 12th 13th 14th and 15th paragraphs hanman is still you know talking about this old school method of evacuation what he is going to say now he says that from 12th para to 15th para hanman says what i discussed all these things all these ways of treatment in 11 number of paragraphs you know 17 ways they were coming since ages then now hanman is slicing down and saying that in my time i am seen doctors in hanman's time learning all these methods you know what are those methods those who are in vogue aise kon kon se tarike इस तरह के इवैक्यूएशन के हेनमिन के जमाने में भी परसिस्ट करते थे उस टाइम के मेडिकल स्कूल यही सिखाते थे यही सीखना होता था उस समय के मेडिकल डॉक्टर को दीज वर द प्राइम एंड मेन स्ट्रीम टीचिंग्स फॉर ट्रीटिंग ऑफ द डिजीजेस हाउ हेनमिन इज सेइंग यू सी द लाइन ही राइट्स इन द 12th पैरा अ फेवरेट आईडिया ऑफ ऑर्डिनरी स्कूल ऑफ मेडिसिन until recent times and just see the bracket would that i could not say the most recent i am to say actually with all regret that it is the most recent one he is regretting on this most recent one means in the hanimans time now the same you know paragraph uh, the the same uh, lines you know written in this uh, uh, brackets let us apply on ourselves out of these many methods we discussed so many are still in vogue aaj bhi istemal hote hain wo and we regret all that you know any case of uh, hemorrhoids hemorrhage from the hemorrhoids just see what is the treatment going on maybe little ways changed but then the thought remains the same any case of fistula what is the treatment and really getting all right i am not finding it is all right so these are the things hanman actually talking you know and in his time when hanman is talking what are the latest methods of evacuations hanman is discussing he discussed earlier as a whole since ages now he is discussing what is there presently in his time and we can discuss we can understand by our different practice of medicine and surgery book that in our time what is prevailing we can understand so what are those and how many ways now in this what you do you club the paragraph number 12 and 13 and if you club both the paragraphs you read these both paragraphs together what are you going to find out there are 10 most important ways hanman is discussing those who are in use out of these 10 methods you know uh, like some seven methods are such which are kind of internal ways of doing things and rest of the three are you know something which is the external application here hanman has not done the three things he made it you know two things only so what are those you know examples all those examples are of the prevalent methods of evacuation of old school all those methods are prevalent in hanman's time they are the mainstream teaching in the time of hanman which hanman himself learned as a doctor but then he denied practicing those you all know that 
so what are those six ways the six ways are the first of all they feel whatever the whatever the things are all those things actually you are to remove as you know we have been learning you are to excel them out then how to excel from where to excel they are saying now the the techniques are very subtle very minute and in those very minute and subtle things you are to extract the uh, materialistic cause of the disease as per the requirement of the patient as per the general condition general disease of that patient general symptom of that patient you are the doctor will decide that from which part and the area you are going to remove the this materialistic cause of the disease the first area he is talking you know from the blood vessels now whole blood is not required to be removed but in some portion something is to be removed nowadays we remove the blood for the finding of uh, some kind of blood test you know we we need to know the disease tlc increased bilirubin increased all those kind of things <clears throat> method changed then you are to remove the metallistic cause of disease from the lymphatic channels then what next the next is you are to remove this metallistic cause from the skin in the form of sweat in the form of perspiration similarly you are to remove from the urinary system in the form of creating excessive urination then by certain medicines like mercury uh, you are to remove all this by salivary glands in the form of saliva like mercury is the substance which has a tendency to create lot of salivation it is said salivation is salvation salivation is salvation then what are they doing you are to remove all this metallistic cause from your trachea and bronchial tubes you know from the respiratory system in the form of mucus then you are to remove all this from the git in the form of vomiting and the purging diarrhea so these are the uh, six seven ways he is narrating that all these things have become very very subtle kind of ways of removing that uh, uh, metallistic cause evacuation methods have advanced it's a advancement you know a little bit of advancement from the previous ages in the time of henman and henman and rest of the doctors of those days were learning all these methods then what are the external ways which he is talking in uh, para 3 he is talking in para 3 para 13 sorry uh, that uh, uh, what are you doing you are you are creating some kind of holes in the body h o l e hole two ways septum and fontanelles what is fontanelles fontanel is that when you make a ulcer kind of thing a hole between the muscles so that out of these hole the there will be a discharge constant discharge from the body and this way you know you will be able to evacuate the materialistic cause then sometime this is not required or this is not possible like for example somebody is suffering with fistula you cannot make a hole already there is a hole, hole uh, definitely that is what the fistula disease is so what they do they put a satin satin is a kind of some thread metallic thread you just pass through the whole track and you just leave that in in that uh, fistula so in because of the foreign body in the response we understand now that body has a uh, reaction to any foreign body in the system so out of that response uh, 
a lot of discharge they did not understand that it is the reaction of the body reaction of the vital force rather they felt there is a discharge hence they are removing the materialistic cause from disease with the help of satan then what else they were using sand flies that fly is when when they cut on the skin the blister is formed so that is called using fly blisters sand fly ne aake aapko kaat liya blister ho gaya usme se discharge hoga that is the way you know all these painful ways you and we cannot imagine then they are using the miserium as a herb we also use miserium internally as a medicine those days they were using miserium for the purpose of you know applying on the skin which is a skin irritant causing you know a weeping eczema so all these three ways and the above all rest of the ways external and the uh, other ways of evacuation they all were in vogue when they all were in vogue what is the conclusion you know out of all this and means says see 13 para cm dash the the second the the 13 para second last line which starts with the dash but they only what do you mean by they all these some 10 ways of treatment of evacuation those who were prevalent in the time of hanuman but they only weakened it they only weakened it who got weakened the patients who were given such kind of treatment so as generally to render it incurable they made the patient weak they made the patient incurable by all these senseless unnatural processes so one very important thing hanuman is saying now in the 14th paragraph what is he saying he says i admit that it was more convenient for the weakness of humanity to assume that now any patient coming to you even now with some skin disease what is he saying you have taken the whole case you found out that you are suffering with psoriasis i am giving you the medicine you have given him some indicated medicine you know in liquid or the pills or whatever the requirement or the suggestion you made out for him then after you know gathering his medicine he will will patient will come to you again asking doctor sir kuch lagane ke liye nahi diya doctor you have not given me anything to apply on the skin what should i apply now see if you say all right i am giving you a medicine and you give some placebo to apply you are very easily relieved but suppose if you have not given anything to apply then it will it may take you know some half an hour to make him understand this is what you know in the uh, in this paragraph in 14th paragraph and it says that it is so easy you know to tell the patient that whatever is your suffering it is because of due to you know internally there is some kind of mucus or there is some impurity in the blood or there is some kind of uh, mucus you know in your bronchial tube my job is to treat you by removing all this it is so common you know understanding for the patient yes i got it patient does not require any explanation when as soon as he comes to know that my problem doctor understood because there is lot of mucus inside that is why i am coughing if a, once i get one medicine which is going to remove this mucus my cough will be all right he will not ask you second question he will be only asking you that uh, how many times to take medicine and when to come next that's it he will be going very satisfied so one doctor 
who is believing the concept of uh, disease as a dynamic for him it is very difficult to teach the patient that disease is dynamic even if it is on skin it is not a local disease i am giving you internal medicine you please carry on with this internal medicine it will be taken care with this medicine only he will be going you know very unsatisfied very much you know question mark face from you he will be now uh, start judging you whether you really know the disease why you know because since ages this is the practice to give something externally since ages homeopathy is just 300 or 250 years old it is since ages this practice of applying something on the skin going on so he remains dissatisfied and the doctors those who are of the old school concept they give you know all those things make them understand not in much words very easy see i have seen your x ray in the x ray there is a mucus i am giving you medicine to remove this mucus you will be all right he will not ask second question as i told so old school physician now what he has to do he is only to be busy in procuring all such medicines to give it to his patients to actually sell the medicine to his patients he is more a seller in this concept doctor is more a marketing man he is just selling all these things he is not to really apply so much of mind use so much of words to make the patient understand that disease is dynamic rather he is telling his concept patient is very much satisfied because patient has been and his family has been listening since ages this is how we are tuned in the mind our mental tuning is such and we feel very happy we go very happy and that is the reason sometimes some homeopathic doctors are uh, resorting on those ideas which is really not required i don't recommend that i don't do that so what all they are doing they are they all are busy you know collecting those medicines for uh, blood purifying on all, all those you know diuresis and all such conditions and you see similarly in the 14th paragraph only hanuman says now what kind of the differences you will find in the mitre medica of homeopathy and in the mitre medica of old school in the old school mitre medica almost you know the kind of medicines are coming from uh, you know the uh, from the same source from the mother nature what is mizerium you see they are they are using mizerium we are using mizerium r is some different purpose different understanding we understand mizerium in entirely different way but the substance is same in their mitre medica in old school mitre medica they only write after medicine whether this medicine is a diuretic or diaphoristic or uh, you know it is going to bring the menses in the female or you know all such varieties you know different names you know he has written what are those names diuretic diaphoretic expectorant imanogog means which can create menses in the female and more particularly whether they produce evacuation of the stomach and bowels up or down so all these kind of medicines in their mitre medica are categorized and explained in these kind of functions and but you see are you have to know that uh, if the medicine of drosera for cough the cough of drosera of this type cup of uh, sina of this type cough in brinia of this type you know manganum this type all have different different modalities and concomitants and all those things we are to be so meticulous they need not be so much meticulous only expectoration will help expectorating medical substance will help that's it that is how their mitre medica so he says at the end of 14th para and then says 
because all the aspirations and efforts of the practitioner have ever been chiefly directed to cause the expulsion of the material morbific matter and of sundry activities means sundry activities means all those very very minute and very very uh, general kind of things need not to be mentioned which it was imagined were the cause of the diseases so up to you know uh, 14th hanman explained about the evacuation methods going on you know in uh, so much of uh, uh, ways and means you know whatever was coming from ages and whatever was there in hanman's time too so uh, that means application of uh, coconut or any other oil in eczema conditions with homeopathic remedy is not right uh, see uh, we are to see and find out anything which is not having any medicinal action so that you know you can apply for example you take bath na? patient take bath we are not saying don't take bath because water has been no such Uh, medicinal power to affect the skin so you are to only judge and find out that anything if patient is applying or you are advising shouldn't be having any medicinal uh, quality of affecting the skin that is what important to understand then these are the disease management parts we may discuss you know uh, separately all these things so coming to the 15th para these were however all idle dreams these are sweet dreams you know of uh, the old school the uh, those school in the hanmans time those who were thinking disease is materialistic cause so all these are sweet dreams of those school unfounded assumptions you know assumption he is saying unfounded even assumption is already unfounded but then he qualifies assumption that this assumption has got no basis and hypothesis cunningly devised for the convenience of therapeutics as it was expected the easiest way of performing a cure would be to remove the material morbific matters c modo essent that means if if it exist in latin it is written it is a it is a hanmans very very sarcastic way of teasing you know the people of those uh, old school if it exist it's a it's a sweet dream it's a idle dream that there is something to be called as materialistic cause of the disease and whatever you are talking it is just you know a cunningly devised extra smartly devised and such kind of uh, devices which you know all old school people were doing are of no use because when they say it is a materialistic materialistic cause they are removing and means is it's a idle dream and if you are doing that only possible if it exist agar aisa hota hai to so this is what you know here hanmin is almost going to end up with the one important way of old school that is the evacuation method and now from 16 as i told you from uh, 16 to 25 paragraphs in these 10 paragraphs hanman is going to give you know a justification and evidence of the understanding about that diseases are of dynamic in origin he is going to give evidences in the footnotes or in the paragraphs and just going to make all of us understand that diseases are dynamic you know in origin 
Huh? What Anvish? What do you want me to say again? Meaning of uh, uh, C modo extend is if it exists, if it is so, you can say. Agar external cause the disease hota hai, though if it is so, if it is existing, got it? So let's go further. But the essential nature of diseases and their cure will not adopt themselves to such fantasies. You know, here Hanman in this paragraph is talking from the vital force side, from the disease side, as if Hanman is himself is a vital principle and that principle is saying something. What is he, that principle is saying? But the essential nature of disease and their cure will not adopt themselves to such fantasies that this vital principle and you know the disease is not going to listen old school and be you know according to their whims and fancies. No, they are not you know diseases are not going to go with their fancies nor to the convenience of the medical man. Anyway, never mind, it is explained. So we become, you know, like those medical men. No. Aisa nahi hoga. Ke disease ab materialistic ho jayegi. Disease will not become materialistic in any way. To humor such stupid, baseless hypothesis, disease will not cease to be dynamic. Now, you know, the whole para is so sarcastic. He is so, in a very, very refined, abusive way, Hanuman writing. Very refined of abuse, you know. Hypothesis disease will not cease to be dynamic. Disease will not cease to be dynamic. Disease is not going to be materialistic. The arrangement of our spirit like vital principle. In sensations and functions, that is to say, immaterial derangements of our state of health, whatever may happen, whatever old school physician says, whatever anybody says, even now we also feel like, you know, nowadays there is a division of orthodox school of homeopathy and the modern homeopathy. Modern homeopathy is now going against Hanuman, thinking like old school. And the orthodox school thinks like this. So you are to decide if you are going to listen all this, practice all this, you will be counted as a orthodox homeopath. I am so happy to be counted as a orthodox homeopath. You decide about yourself. So when Hanuman says, that is to say, what is the meaning of that is to say. That is to say, it's very simple. It means, I mean. Mere kehne ka matlab hai ki, I mean. So, Hanuman says, I mean, immaterial derangements of our state of health, it will remain, you know, immaterial derangement of our state of health. It is not going to be the materialistic state of health. In anybody's recommendation or anybody's convenience. This is what you know this paragraph is going to say. Then in the next para, Hanuman is now again coming back regarding the concept of old school. And now he is not going to repeat something what he has already told. In the 17th paragraph, Hanuman is going to talk about, you know, certain experimentations he is telling to the old school people that if you are saying diseases are of a materialistic origin, he is now suggesting some experiments for them that you do these experiments, it may prove your viewpoint. But then he told in this para that doing this experiment you will not be successful because it is not, you know, the materialistic cause of the disease. What are the things he is suggesting? See, 
it's very important to understand you know uh, these are the experimentations done by pasteur louis pasteur to prove that the anthrax is a infectious disease what experiment louis pasteur did you know in 1890 uh, around he took the infectious part of the anthrax suffering uh, you know sheep and you know inoculated in a healthy sheep and she got suffered with the anthrax and from that again he could do that so this was the you can understand you can read about the experiment of louis pasteur and the similar you know thing was done by robert koch robert koch it is called koch postulate you can just go google and find out what is koch postulate it is something like this hanman is suggesting what is he suggesting he is saying suppose if you say that this is the material cause of the disease so this materialistic substance you inoculate you just give it you know in somebody's uh, normal human being system whether he is going to fall sick so this is something he is now suggesting here and he is answering himself and even answering himself he is saying he has given you know the experiment in footnote 1 and footnote 2 like for example uh, suppose a normal pure drinking water if you and me as a doctor infuse you know inject in somebody's arteries or veins what is going to happen imagine <clears throat> we give uh, you know uh, patients to uh, you know high, uh, those who are the of uh, you know dehydrated condition we give them fluid but then do you think what kind of fluid it is is it the normal pure drinking water or it's something else it's not normal drinking water you know it is uh, it is a solution which is isotonic in nature so if suppose you just simply give whatever the pure drinking water it is going to ultimately harm the rbcs and then it is going to create lot many issues and ultimately patient may die this is what you know in the first footnote hanman saying life was endangered by injecting a little pure water into vein because it is going to harm rbcs rbcs will burst so similarly he is giving in this footnote same footnote atmospheric air injected into the blood vessels what is going to happen we all read embolism and what is going to happen finally patient will die so even if you know other kind of things you are doing as he is suggesting in this uh, the causes of our maladies cannot be material i am reading 17th paragraph since the least foreign material substance however mild it may appear to us if introduced into our blood vessels is promptly ejected by vital force you know our vital force are, are not going to accept it two examples i exported you what is you know what is reacting to all this bursting of the rbc and whatever this is the reaction of the vital force similarly hanmin says another example he is giving just just read out of it if even the minutest splinter penetrates a sensitive part of our organism a minor very small splinter even if enter you know below the nail what is going to happen the whole you know this our a uh, vital principle which is present everywhere in the body is going to create pain and fever and discharge and swelling and everything you know ultimately you are to make some method to remove it or body will finally you know make it 
full of pus and may you may need to cut it or you know it may fall down or anything but then it will not sit idle for a very small thing vital force cannot sit idle and uh, you think that uh, any skin disease like psoriasis or any eczema it is persisting for 20 years you know how it is possible how is this possible so these are the like questions you know he is raising in all this paragraph and many many other things he is saying whatever the materialistic cause even now they are talking <coughs> like for example in cases of gout even you know in cases of scrofula this is the poison or that is the poison uh, he is questioning helmin is questioning has anyone seen it it is just you know said so all these things need lot of you know uh, um, reflection that how these things are said in those days and even now all these things in a very very subtle manner uh, persisting as i told you now they say the molecular cause any neck problem are you able to listen me all of you So, okay so uh, that means he has question here so many things and suggested you know some kind of uh, mm, you know uh, experiment to all those uh, old school method people that try and do this and we will be coming to know exactly what is you know happening then coming to the 18 para even when the application of material substance to the skin or to the wound now he is saying see hanuman in the whole ognon like you can make out he is talking in a very methodical manner he will be giving example then he will be giving you know the example in a very methodical manner the what are the general ways then he will say surgical ways then he will say the external means of medicines used all this way so now in the 17th para he talked something to be given in the system of the body now in 18th he is saying that for whatever the local so called local disease you are telling to apply something why they are saying so to apply something only reason that it is only up to skin disease is up to skin and medicine is also going to affect only the skin the whatever the medication you are using on the skin it will not be absorbing anywhere in the system this is how they are saying but then hanman is giving a justification here that suppose if any infecting material is touching to the skin or to the wound if present here then what is going to happen then something happens and that infection immediately leads to the whole organism he has given the example even if you wash that part to your best capacity till then you know it reaches forget washing you cut that part apart even then infection already you know reached <clears throat> he is giving in the footnote you know it has i think a footnote in the second number footnote yes in the second footnote he is telling a girl in glasgow 8 years of age having been bit by a mad dog pagal kutte ne kaat liya a mad dog you know beaten uh, to a small girl the surgeon immediately cut the piece clean out and yet 36 days after she was seized with hydrophobia which killed her in 2 days even you make an incision and clean that part even then infection reached why because the most important and most difficult infections they travel through the nerves 
it travel through the nerve sensory nerves and reaching to your most important part you read the chronic disease theoretical part treatment of sora and you read psycho neuro immunology pni you will come to know the role of nervous system you know such a important role of nervous system in creating and curing the diseases how our nervous system even our psyche pni is psycho neuro immunology psychology nervous system nervous system and endocrine system are one the endocrines are nothing but the extension of nervous system only and immunology these all you know mind to immunology they all work together as one system in what way they are not in one direction they are bidirectional you know the immunity is talking to the mind and the mind is talking to the immunity this is what hanman wanted to say you know in a old language and the new system is coming up in the uh, modern school what we call today pni they are of the lines towards you know as homeopathy was talking they are not towards the line of uh, the old school of you know evacuation methods that is why you are not listening so much about pni in the allopathic side nowadays so this is what you know uh, he is talking in uh, para 18 that if you apply something it's not your choice that it will not go to the system it will go to the system and he gives an example of a uh, uh, infection of a girl uh, you know after the beaten by a dog so coming to the 19th para what ponderable quantity of material substance could have been absorbed into the fluids in order to develop you know it is the same continuation as like 18th in the first of these instances a tedious discrecia you know he is talking now syphilis somebody had a uh, polluted contact and in that the one who is suffering with syphilis now you know the other one who is normal when he is going in the relationship he is contracting the syphilis now how it is developing it is not simply a local disease now we understand those days only hanmin was understanding rest are saying it is a local skin disease even if you wash that part does not matter whatever meticulously you wash it maybe some kind of uh, soap and such thing if you wash for the time being you know uh, the syphilis uh, kind of ulcer may go because it is a very shy ulcer it just come to the uh, soap and all and ulcer goes means syphilis has gone not like this it bounces back it comes back you know and syphilis has got we all understand three stages tertiary syphilis it goes up to brain finally so these kind of examples he is giving you know even he is giving the example of smallpox how smallpox is traveling you know it is it is a airborne infection every human being needs air to live to survive and if it is air born it will reach you like covid 19 this virus is a uh, not air born it is a droplet born so simply sitting home you may save yourself but then think smallpox even sitting home you are in threat smallpox that is why you know r not value of smallpox was 6.1 the r not value when i say r not value r not is value is the ratio in which the uh, one infected person can infect so many the r not value is 6 for smallpox it was 6 for covid 19 you know it is like somewhere 3 
two point something. We we say three. So this is you know uh, he is explaining uh, you know all these examples you know that how all these things are causing you know the infection of one person to the other person. So I just read the nineteenth uh, paragraph for you, the initial portion. What ponderable quantity of material substance could have been absorbed into the fluids in order to develop, in the first of these instances, a tedious dyscrasia syphilis, which, when uncured, is only extinguished with the remotest period of life with death. You know, it just go away with death if not treated with homeopathic means. In the last disease, smallpox, accompanied by almost general suppuration and often rapidly fatal. Now, in this uh, um, third of uh, uh, footnote, in order to account for large quantity of putrid, excrementitious matter and fetid discharge, often met within disease, and to be able to represent them as a material substances that excites and keeps up disease so you can read this now you can very easily understand all this you know 19th para he is been talking about all these examples that how infection occurs see one example how often has it happens that an irritating word has brought on a dangerous bilious fever. In all these examples, you know, in the in this paragraph, Henman is telling, like, for example, somebody spoke to you in a very angry mood, and because of the anger, you feel headache, you feel pain abdomen, you may get fever. What kind of materialistic substance entered, you know, from the angry person to the other person? No, nothing. But then there is a illness, there is a sickness. He is giving all these lines, you know, about all this. <clears throat> the abrupt communication of sad or excessively joyful news has occasionally occasioned sudden death in these cases. Where is the material morbific principle that entered in substance into the body? So all these, you know, examples Hanuman is talking regarding and giving the evidences, as I told you, that diseases are dynamic in origin. There is nothing material in this. He is giving all these examples in the whole of this paragraph. Coming to the 20th one. The champions of this clumsy doctrine of morbific matter. See the language. If any old school physician read this sentence, he will fire. Because he says champions of clumsy doctrine. What is clumsy? Clumsy is something which is very difficult to handle. It is simply you are holding something and it is just falling from your hand. It is, it is called clumsy. So, all those evacuation methods are so difficult to handle. That is why he says the champions of this clumsy doctrine of morbid matters ought to be ashamed that they have so inconsiderately overlooked and failed to appreciate the spiritual nature of the life and the spiritual dynamic power of exciting causes of the disease. And that they have thereby degraded themselves into mere scavenger doctors. See the language. You know the scavenger? Safai Karamchari. The scavenger, you know, are those, those who take away the uh, deadly things, bad things, useless things, garbage. Garbage cleaner is a scavenger. In nature, there are the garbage cleaners, like for example, crow, like for example, eagle. They all are scavengers. They take away the dead uh, rats and dead cocks, you know, dead animals. They take away the dead animals. So he says all the doctors of the old school, scavenger doctor. 
disorders. You are just claiming the end product of the disease. Who in their efforts to expel from the diseased body morphic matter that never existed in place of curing destroy life. See, allegation of Hanuman to the old school. He, he put an allegation that you are a killer. You destroy life. You are not in the name of treatment. You destroy life. So this is all, you know, Hanuman is talking, you know, about uh, the old school and homeopathy and presently, you know, in this 16th para onwards we are reading, we are reading about how the evidences of dynamic conditions of diseases are. We are now uh, understanding all this. We will be continuing with the evidences in the further paragraphs he been talking regarding the non-metallistic variety, non-metallistic uh, state of uh, diseases. So we will be continuing. Uh, we are able to finish, you know, up to the uh, 20th paragraph. And uh, in just two lines, if we finish with 21st, are then the foul, often disgusting excretions, which occur in diseases, the actual matter that produces and keeps them up. Are they not rather always excretory products of the disease itself, that is, of the life which is only dynamically deranged and disordered. He is raising a question. He is just trying to make them understand. My dear brethren, you understand, whatever you are calling as the cause of the disease, they are not the cause of disease, but rather they are the byproduct of the disease. Are they not the byproduct of the disease? This is what you know he is raising here. So we will be continuing from tomorrow on, you know, all these paragraphs further regarding the evidences of uh, uh, the uh, non-metallistic state of diseases. So I hope that we today discussed about the evacuation methods, you know, in the uh, 11 number of uh, paragraph, he told us about some 17 methods. Then in uh, next coming uh, paragraphs like 12 and 13, he told that in 11, they all were since ages. But in my time, and I am very sorry to say that the most recent one means exactly when Raniman is writing in 18th uh, 18, 25, 24, 29, even that, you know, early part of 19th century, the ways of treatment were all these, as he explained uh, about the uh, some 7, 10 ways, as I told you. And then, you know, he's saying all these methods are definitely harming, not really helping. Then he started with the lot many examples and the evidences of telling that diseases are of dynamic in origin, diseases are non-metallistic. He has given number of examples and he has justified, you know, by giving them some kind of experimentations. Suppose if you just put in something in the body system, something to be called materialistic morbific matter, that is not even going to make somebody sick, but it will immediately finish the life, kill the person. So disease cannot be like this. And then all these examples he has given, as I told you just now. So just to sum up, I must say, if we go into all these examples very thoroughly, it is going to give all of us one conviction how to understand diseases when a patient come to me even if he is saying that my suffering is due to because of this kind of materialistic cause we should not be you know in any way uh, accepting his version even i may be quiet but then i will not take this up 
For example, a patient comes suffering with paralysis happened due to a uh, cerebrovascular accident cva in that condition if patient is having cva i should not restrict myself that there is a cva i am to go what could be the dynamic cause what i am to find for the dynamic cause that what actually happened you know either patient fell injury or if anything you know any kind of emotional accident occurred with him we need to find out all those things and i think we all are doing this ultimately the whole medical subjects are developed you know the foundation is the mentalistic view point of the diseases if we whatever the subject we read pathology this and that all are you know having a basis of mentalistic concept our need as a homeopathic doctor is that we must be able to develop our subjects you know these subjects are required but then it requires that their foundation should be the dynamic cause of the disease and then we develop anatomy physiology pathology all those subjects which is not been done this is the task for all of us we need to do, do that and whatever the available knowledge i am not saying discard all this knowledge this knowledge is going to be connected somewhere when we are going to really change the foundation i am saying change that foundation of materialistic viewpoint reading this introduction if it is going to change in us the foundation of this materialistic viewpoint it will be of great achievement so this is it you know for today and uh, i believe these kind of discussions this kind of patient hearing of all of you is really going to uh, get hold of this dynamic view point uh, in the coming you know uh, lectures when we are going to go with the aphorisms we will be more elaborating on this dynamic cause of disease and how to understand the dynamic cause of disease so till then we reach there we continue with this it is you know when we are reading this we are able to judge our foundation how our foundation is uh, you know influenced with a lot of this uh, uh, materialistic view point note this are you really reading your subjects materia ognon rest of the medical subjects with the point of view of a uh, materialistic view point or with the dynamic view point your understanding of physiology anatomy is with dynamic view point or the materialistic view point this is need to be uh, examined need to be corrected and need to be re-erected so uh, for now this much any questions let me take your questions if any or any of your comments of today's lecture i would be you know uh, just would like to know now on the live chat or if you feel that you will be writing in the comment section uh, i will be you know waiting your questions comments all those uh, so many of the uh, listeners they write me they may be the live listener they may be the you know post uh, uploading listeners so as per the time so many people are hearing and writing me about the uh, lecture their comments their questions so those who all all are listening me right now if you have any questions write me here waiting so all right for now uh, no more uh, questions i feel
so thank you very much everyone if any questions you can always uh, write me uh, in the comment section thank you everyone uh, let us uh, sign off for today and uh, we again catch up tomorrow uh, 5 pm to continue with the rest of the uh, forisms i only uh, say one thing to all of you to uh, to really uh, read all these uh, paragraphs and footnotes in a in a hurried manner from your point of view my explanations uh, will be you know uh, helping you a lot but then if you are simply sitting without reading uh, you may feel boring so uh, i wish that uh, as i am seeing some comments since the beginning of today's lecture i am finding so many of you are really reading it so it's a pleasure for me that uh, you are really uh, reading it uh, there are certain questions or comments let me see priya gurg it's great session today sir really helpful in clearing the misconceptions thank you it's my pleasure then uh, manshu says thank you yes sure definitely uh, my pleasure and wish sir highly diluted pulsatilla juice means see uh, sometime hanuman is saying diluted pulsatilla juice means that one drop of the mother tincture in half cup of water it is a highly diluted pulsatilla juice so this is how somewhere hanmin has mentioned the potency like for example aconite he is saying decilion fold so he told the potency 30 and wish what will be the difference between dynamic study materialistic study of the subject yes these are the points you know we will be coming on this it's a it's a important question to be discussed in detail i just keep this question for today and we will be discussing this question you also work on this what is the difference between the uh, dynamic study and the materialistic study so far you have heard you have read so much about materialistic study you know about the pathology but we need to understand how we can understand dynamic study of pathology what is dynamic study of pathology the dynamic study of pathology is like understanding myasms since we are so much engrossed our foundation is so much you know uh, built on a materialistic viewpoint for all of us understanding myism is a very very tough job reason our understanding of pathology is not based on the dynamic viewpoint this paralysis is due to grief do we read such kind of things in pathology or practice of medicine or surgery this piles most of the cases of hemorrhoids are of emotional origin but this is a part of surgery this is a topic of surgery in uh, today's medicine and we also agree yaar surgery to karna padega all these points we need to understand means uh, it is not that tough to understand now but then it is very tough because our orientation is different our orientation is whole of the medical doctors of whatever may be the stream the total orientation is materialistic viewpoint and when i say the hemorrhoids is nothing but due to the emotional reasons then how many of you are going to agree you will only agree seeing patients like this so this is what is you know the dynamic origin of the diseases we need to understand this for that we are to build our basis of 
dynamic thing. So in the coming, uh, you know, um, paragraphs of the introduction, Hanman will take us at some of the places Hanman is giving that glimpses. He's saying human being is a highly potentized entity. In the previous paragraphs, he told at one place, highly potentized entity. Understand this. Find out the meaning of this. Think over, you know, reflect on this. Keep thinking, you know, how Hanman is saying and how it is true that we all are very, very dynamic, uh, very, very highly potentized entity. We have to understand this. If we understand this, things are going to be easy. The dynamicity. And once we are of a very, very dynamic, very, very potentized kind of uh, entity, then what subjects are? Subjects are nothing. But they are going to help us to read us, learn about us. So if human physiology we need to learn, we need to learn with the point of view of this dynamic origin. Like, can we get an explanation from the physiology or the pathology that hemorrhoids are of emotional origin? If we are able to make it, you know, as I told you, read PNI, psychoneuroimmunology. That subject is explaining how that sinusitis or allergic rhinitis is of emotional origin. How psoriasis is of origin, emotional origin. How this uh, cancer is having a hidden link with the mind. PNI is talking. Hanuman not talking. PNI talking. The recent experimentations are proving it in the laboratory. It is due to this. So this is how we need to understand. We will be continuing this. This is a perpetual question, Anvesh. And if after what should be the outcome, you know, uh, understanding, reading this uh, you know, organon, this should be the outcome that we should be able to get convinced that we are so dynamic in origin and we are so potentized, our subject should be accordingly. That should be the outcome required. So it's a long job, long, long thing to be done. So continue with the reading, Ognon, introduction. Let us first fully understand the materialistic view. We will be, you know, approaching the dynamic view also in a very, very detailed manner. Thank you so very much, everyone, for this patient hearing. Thank you. Thank you so much.